Bird nerds, what's going on? We're hanging out here with good old Mikey boy. You can kiss us. You can kiss us, huh? He's just hanging out with me. We're uh, enjoying the birds. Got done feeding them. And uh, I've been sitting out here watching some of my babies. So my baby Borks and my baby uh, Goldian Finches. Just watching them to see if they're eating on their own, if they're uh, weaned or not. So uh, as soon as they're weaned, I'm gonna be separating them. So it looks like the Goldian Finch babies are weaned. So we'll probably uh, be getting them into their new cage today. The rosy Borks looks like they're not quite uh, weaned yet. So we're gonna leave them in uh, with the parents a little bit longer. Pink Lemonade, their mom, she's already laid again and has started to sit on her second clutch. So we're good there. Um, so yeah, just been enjoying the birds and hanging out, enjoying some time with good old Mikey boy. He enjoys sitting on the shoulder and just uh, hanging out with me, huh, buddy? Yeah. Um, those of you new to the channel, go on to my website and I'll post the website right here. Go on and uh, check out the, the new Bird Nerd merch that we have. I've had quite a few people buying them. Uh, it's been really cool. And I did get a comment. I'm going to throw the comment in right here. Of someone that uh, ran into someone else that, that noticed the shirt and said something. So we're, we're, we're trying to connect this big world and make it smaller for everyone. And uh, make sure that everyone who wants to learn more about birds, who, who enjoys watching these videos, uh, can get connected. So like the video, sh uh, share it, and subscribe to the channel. And go on and buy some merch to help support the channel. Um, we're gonna be sending out some more uh, merchandise here in the next week or two, so stay tuned for that. Keep leaving, dropping comments down below. We'll be choosing a few more people uh, to do that. Uh, <clears throat> but if not, please go on and support the channel and support us by uh, buying some of the merchandise. So this one that I have on here uh, is one of my hoodies. Just got Birdner, it's got a macaw cross. We've, we've got everything from Mikey, from some of our canaries, Goldian Finches, a few other designs. Bird Nerd logo, I mean, it's got, you can, you can uh, select multiple different options, create what you want from, from the website. So uh, please go on and support the channel that way. Be much appreciated guys, and thank you. So I think today we're gonna, we're gonna dive in a little bit deeper into the Goldian Finches. Sorry, the Goulian Finches. I, I know we've uh, had quite a few people that, uh, Say I'm pronouncing it wrong. I think a lot of us in, in uh, the United States pronounce Goldian, me included. Um, so, sorry about that. But uh, we'll, uh, I think we're gonna in, jump into to breeding, some of the issues that they have, look at genetics in a little bit uh, more in depth um, view and how to get certain genetic colorings out of your uh, Goulian finches. To, to help get what you need. We, we've got a good variety of colors uh, with, with what I have here. Mo most of it is the wild type, a lot of redhead and blackhead, greenbacks, purple and white breasts. Um, so the purple greenback, purple breast, and um, redhead, blackhead. I always say orange head. Uh, a lot of people call them yellow heads. Um, those are the wild types, so, that you, so you can find those in the wild but you can inter, intermix colors to, to get different colors. And so just a, a quick 101 genetic basics. Redhead is dominant, purple breast is dominant, and greenback is dominant. So what that means is if you put a red-headed Goldian Finch with a black-headed Goldian Finch, redhead will be the dominant gene and your offspring will be redhead. And then sometimes this is where it gets confusing. You do have some uh, genetic splits that, that are uh, sex linked. Um, so like your females would be redhead sp split to blackhead. Your males would just be redhead um, and something like that. So um, so redhead is dominant. So your all of your off offspring would be redhead even if the females um, uh, uh, even if like the mom is black headed. Purple breast is the same thing. If you have purple breast with uh, a white breast, purple is always dominant. 
So the babies will come out purple breast, split to white breast. And then you could take those babies and put them with a white breast. And then that's when they'll start producing both white and purple breast. If you have two white breasts together, you're gonna get white breasted babies. If you have two green backs together, you're gonna get two green backs. Um, the only possibility with that one is if they are split to blue back and both, both genders have to be split to blue back for them to produce that blue color. Yellow, um, yellow is when it gets a little tricky because you have um, single factor and double factor yellows. Um, <clears throat> so your double factor is, is your pure yellow mutation. If you put yellow with yellow, you're gonna get yellow offspring. If you put yellow with green, you're going to get um, a mixture of colors with both yellow back, dilute, and green back, and those will be sex linked. Um, and it depends on if your male or female is yellow and if they're single or double factor. Um, with, if your yellows are split to blue and you put them with a, a blue back, you can uh, get silver out of that. That's how you get silver or white, golden finches. Um, but just know that all of your dominance, your red, your green back and your purple breast, those are all dominant genes and mutations. And so that means that your offspring will most likely be those colors if you're putting, if you're, that first generation offspring would be that those colors. And then if you took those, that offspring, cause then they would be split to your red, to your blacks or to your yellow heads, um, blue backs, things like that. Once you put those splits, those offspring that have splits in their genetics with um, pair them up with a partner that already carry those same genetics as well. That's when you start producing the different colors. So, um, Goldian, Goulian finches, they, they, it, it can, uh, it can get pretty complex on some of the colors. Um, they do have, there is a, a website and I'll post it right here that you can go on and, and put in at least what you can see visually, what, you, what your Goulian finches show visually, um, their colorings, and then you can, guess what their offspring will be. And then if they throw something else out, say you put two purple breasts together and some of their offspring come out white breasts, then you know that both of those parents were split to white breast, right? So um, it's, it's kind of, it kind of adds some fun to it where you can mix and match a little bit um, and understand those genetics better. And, and then once you understand them, then you can really truly pair birds together uh, for a specific cause or purpose, right? To get specific colors, to um, <clears throat> get different sizes. I mean, size of the birds plays a good uh, a role in it. The, the depth of color that they have plays a good role in it. So you wanna make sure that you're trying to breed the best of the best, right? And that's how it would work in, in the wild. The most dominant are the ones that survive, right? Survival of the fittest. So your, your weak ones that are smaller in body or, um, can't fend off any of the other males or things like that to be able to breed. They, they slowly get weeded out, so to say. Um, and so it's important here in captivity that we try to encourage of a similar aspect as far as just trying to breed your best birds together and not just um, breed poor genetics. Because we don't, we don't want to continue to create poor genetic, sound, genetically sound birds. We, we want the best of the best. So we need to clip your... Uh, toenail don't we buddy it keeps getting caught in my shirt um some breeding concerns and you guys all know that i've had some breeding concerns um so so far this year as far as just making sure your birds pair up um the best things to to note are for your birds to be in breeding condition your males will have that pearly white beak your females will have that dark black beak and that's the females with the dark beaks, that works for all females except for yellowbacks. The yellowback females, their beaks do not go dark. In fact, they kind of, they have a little bit of a, a dark hue to them, um, and that's how you can tell, but they don't go black like your, your greenbacks and your um, bluebacks. Uh, your silvers are as well, your silvers and your yellows, they, their females' beaks don't go black. So that's a little bit trickier to understand and, and make sure that your females are in breeding condition. When, you're, when your birds are in breeding condition, their, their plumage and their feathers, they should be in great shape. They should be vibrant. They should be full of color, both males and females. 
Um, and that's a good way to show them that, that they're healthy, they're active, and, and they're ready to breed. So usually if you, if you have those, um, those are all good signs. You want that to happen. You can kind of see some of those Goldian finches there behind me. That's, those are all um, identifiers that, that they're ready to breed. Nesting material. Uh, I mostly use cocoa fiber and a shredded up uh, paper towel or shredded paper. They do like that. Really, there's a whole, there's a whole bunch of things you can use. There's feathers. There's um, I, I would not encourage to use any type of string because that can wrap around your bir your bird's feet. Cut off circulation if, and if not attended to, it can. Uh, their feet can fall off. So um, those are some of the nesting materials I use. I think that's one of the mistakes I made this year, you guys. I, uh, I ran out of cocoa fiber. I used to have a huge supply of it. Ran out of cocoa fiber. And with COVID and some of the things, it's been really hard to get a hold of cocoa fiber. I've got some now and we're, we're starting to give it to the birds. But um, I think that's one of, one of the areas that, that I've had issues with this year. And I've thrown in paper towel and stuff like that for the birds to, to build their nest. Um, but their, their nests are not like how they used to build them with the cocoa fiber. And if you get golden finches that, that are in breeding condition, they can build a, a pretty elaborate nest uh, out of that cocoa fiber. And, and it creates a sound base and then they line it with some feathers or the paper towel and then, then, then they deposit their eggs on top of that. And it, and it just makes for a really good sound, solid nest. Some of my nest boxes just have had that, that paper towel and it's been really loose. And so eggs have been able to like slip under the corners or slip underneath some of the paper towels and then they don't get incubated properly. They're not fertilized or, you know, they're, they don't hatch out because they're not getting sat on appropriately. So. I think that's one of the issues that I found. So make sure you have the right nesting material and provide that, provide extra to them. Uh, they make a mess of it. It goes everywhere, all over the floor. They probably only use 30% of what you put in the cage, um, but just make sure that you have that extra amount so that they can use whatever they feel is needed for their nests. And that'll help you just, just in the long run to, to have a, a more successful incubation period and hatch rate with your chicks. So. Um, trying to think here, what else do we got? If your pairs are, don't seem to be getting along, I've had a few that I've put together and they haven't really fought, but they really haven't done much. Um, there's a couple things that you can do. You can separate them again for a short time, one to two weeks. And, and actually we had some comments down below, um, from a couple of our other breeders that breed gul gulians that, that put that tip in there. And I actually tried it and it worked. Um, so thank you. Appreciate, pre appreciate you guys for um, your advice on that. Um, so separate them for a little bit, one to two weeks. Make sure they can still see each other. Thankfully on my cages, I have like the dividers that I can put into the cages. So they're still in the same cage, but they can't um, be next to each other. And then um, it just kind of reinvigorates them in a way. And then I remove that. They start building nests and, and laying eggs right away. So um, that was great. Or if you have the option to um, s swap out a male, you can do that as well. I, I did do that with a couple of my pairs and that worked as well. That stimulated the female and, and she's laying eggs now. So you can swap out males. Just keep a close eye on them. Um, they may, uh, once you, if you do swap out males, they may bicker for a little bit the first few days just because it's a new partner and they had bonded with, with that other. And so just give it a few time or a little bit of time if after, one, maybe two weeks, they're still kind of uh, beak fencing and things like that, and, and no progressions happen. It may be that she doesn't want that male, and you could either try a different male or put that prior male, male back in there with her and see if that uh, helps out any. So, um, you guys can hear my Amardine babies squawking. Kind of quiet, but got two different nests of them, so. I need some males. My last uh, babies at floods were all female, four females. So I'm hoping that um, these next couple clutches of babies will be uh, get some males in there. Probably the last thing to, to note with the Goldian, the Goulian finches is uh, with their babies. So, um, well, first off, they do tend to, to toss. Um, I've, I have some pairs that, that toss easier than others. So I would recommend if, if you're not quite sure, try to 
to not check the nest as much. Um, that, that does help. If, if you already have a pair that, that is solid for you and you, and you and you know them and you feel like you can check the nest, that's fine. But I try to not check the nest as much and stay away from them so that they, they feel as safe as possible and have their privacy and they tend not to toss. Uh, I make sure that I have egg food um, and that first week that the babies have hatched, I have egg food twice a day. So in the morning and then in the, the early afternoon, if I get home from work, I'll, I'll give them another fresh round. Just a scoop is all you need. Don't need a ton. I don't want extra in there because it can go bad quickly, especially when it's warm weather. So, um, so, I, so I do that and that, that does help. I don't feed live insects to my birds. Uh, I, I have every once in a while thrown some worms out there for them and they do eat them, but I, that's not something that I've uh, ventured out and done. Um, so I don't have, I don't feed live food and, and it seems to not affect, it's the goldian, fin the goulian finches at least, it doesn't affect them as much. So, um, but egg food is important when you have chicks uh, or they more, most likely will toss them. I have had in the past, some pairs that, that have raised babies off of just seed, but your success rate is a lot higher if you, if you provide egg food. When your chicks are raised, when they've fledged, make sure you give them a few weeks with the parents so that they can wean. Once you're, you see your babies drinking water, that's the most important thing. They know where the water is and they can drink it themselves and uh, eating seed, then you can pull them put them in a, a cage separate from the parents uh, so that they don't interfere. Lots of times the parents will go, will, will lay a second clutch before the chicks are weaned. And sometimes they can go in and out of the nest box and disrupt that pattern so your second clutch isn't as successful. So as soon as those chicks are weaned, I would pull them just to give your parents the best chance of uh, raising the second clutch successfully. So, um, and uh, I, ha I did hear a tip once the, because golden finches, they, the babies have those three knobs, those three nodules on their sides of their mouths. Typically the rule of thumb is, is once you can't see those anymore on the babies after they fledged, then usually they've weaned. Um, so that's, uh, an old bird breeder told me that a long time ago and it has seemed to be fairly true. So once the, once the chicks fledge, they, they still have, they're a lot smaller, but they, you can still see those nodules. And by the time those are gone, usually the, the birds are weaned. So that's a visual indicator that you could use to ensure that, uh, your babies could be weaned. So try to think what else we got here, guys, drop some comments down below. What, what else do you guys want me to talk about on golden finches? Some, some more in depth breeding. I know we've taught, touched a lot of the surface items for beginning to breed your golden, your Goulian finches, but let me know in the comments down below some in-depth questions of things that we could maybe create a video on and see how that would work for you guys if that if that would be something that, that we can make another video out and some, some content to add and, and hopefully help you with your, your breeding. So appreciate you guys. Appreciate you. Say bye, Mikey. Good job, buddy. We'll see you next time.